All right, everyone, I'm just going to share my screen one more time and we will kick it off. Okay, there we are. So thanks everyone for your patience while I get my slides uh, ready to go. I'm flying solo this evening, but again, if you just logged in, uh, my name is Sean Callanan. I'm the Assistant Director for New Student and Transition Programs at the University of Richmond. I, alongside a few other members um, of my team, work really closely with the Richmond Endeavor Program. So I'm very excited that you're all here. I'm hoping that I can answer any questions you might have about the community um, that is the Richmond Endeavor, um, maybe if whether you've already applied or are thinking of applying, um, this is a good place just to get some clarity um, about program requirements and what you can expect as an Endeavor student for your first year. So if you are um, here and you maybe don't quite know what the Richmond Endeavor program is yet, um, it is a hallmark academic program just for first year students at U of R. Um, it really ties into all different aspects of being a, a new university student. It um, has elements supporting your academic progression and major um, declaration. Um, it allows you to build really strong um, bonds with your peers, as well as unique opportunities to connect with um, some of your faculty, your professors at U of R, um, and staff members like me as well. Um, so throughout this uh, session, I'll be throwing some quotes up of um, that we've had from students um, giving program feedback over the years. So feel free to read those as we pass over them. Um, just to get right to the point, though, I'm going to focus on exactly what the Richmond Endeavor program is uh, this, this evening. So like I said before, Endeavor is just for incoming first year students. Um, it, it's a unique year long um, program during your first year at the University of Richmond, um, where you get to take two linked courses. Um, and I'll go over kind of what that looks like in just a couple minutes. Um, but link, when, when I say linked um, courses, I'm referring to um, two courses covering the same topic um, spread over the course of a year. Um, so we, it's really important to provide uh, continuity um, in different ways between these linked courses for us. So those courses are taught by um, the same professor. Um, so it's pretty unique to have the same professor um, both semesters of your first year um, in university. So that's one important part of the process there. Um, these courses can cover a variety of different topics. Um, just about all of them will give you um, credit towards either your gen general education or a major that you might declare la later down the road. And again, I'll get to what those might look like in a couple of minutes. Um, but it's really cool um, to be an Endeavor student because you get to sort of have this overarching um, academic experience that takes place throughout an entire year instead of just being cut off um, after your first few months on campus. Um, your professor who teaches your Endeavor course um, is someone, like I said before, that you will get to know very well, not just as a faculty member, but also as an academic advisor. So for your first year, um, and actually until the point of your major declarations, which could be um, all the way until your second year, that same faculty member is going to be um, your advisor who's going to be giving you advice on what courses to take, what majors might be a good fit for you, um, and all those other kind of burning questions that you might have as a first year student. Um, so it's a unique way to get a professor's input um, about your academic uh, progression, as well as just a nice way to kind of get to know them outside of, of the classroom as a human. Um, in addition to your faculty and uh, faculty advisor, um, as an Endeavor student, you also have access to a unique peer mentor known as your navigator. Um, your navigator is actually going to be the first person at the University of Richmond um, who you will have kind of a real phone call with and get to know. Um, they serve as your summer orientation advisor and your summer peer academic mentor. So they're going to help you in a one-on-one -on -one basis walk through your summer registration, uh, make sure that you are getting all of the general education um, requirements fulfilled that you need to during your first semester. And they're kind of there to offer a student's perspective as someone who's recently gone through what you've gone through or are going through. 
um, as you build your schedule and kind of think about um, those burning questions about what should I register for? Is this a good way if I'm interested in um, a couple different majors to make sure that I'm checking the academic boxes that I needed and, and so on and so forth. Um, like I said, that um, navigator will also be the first person you really get to know on campus. They serve as your um, orientation advisor um, and they're also going to be your guide during our pre-orientation experience um, just for Endeavor students, which is called the Roadmap to Success program. Um, so Roadmap is one of our various um, pre-orientation programs that new students can enroll in. Um, they're optional um, for most students. However, as an Endeavor student, um, you are required to come back, uh, come to campus a little early to um, take part in Roadmap. It's the three days before new student orientation begins. So you get to move in kind of before the crowd arrives um, and do some really unique um, programs and, and uh, classes associated with um, your Endeavor topic um, during those three days. So you'll get a chance to um, hang out with your um, your faculty member who's teaching your course. They're going to give you four different um, sort of short courses that are going to introduce you to what a college course feels like and what the format looks like. Um, and they're a little more exploratory than um, a typical general education. So you might, as a, a part of your um, roadmap course, go into the city of Richmond or um, do a unique project that connects to the topic of the course. So um, it's really, we, we give full creativity to the faculty members um, when they're putting together their roadmap courses and some really cool things happen um, every year inside them. Um, so all of that takes place before um, your orientation experience as a new student. Um, after roadmap, you still go through NSO, New Spider Orientation, with the entire uh, first year class. So you still get that kind of experience with all of the um, big events and um, traditions that new, um, new spiders get when they first enter the campus. So all of those things happen one right after another. And then the last thing that I want to highlight about the Richmond Endeavor is that all Endeavor students get um, to live in Laura Robbins Court, which is a designated first year residence hall. Um, so you get to live with someone who might be in your class or might be in a different Endeavor class um, as your roommate. Um, and it's a few different floors in that building um, where all Endeavor students are kind of kept together um, to build community with one another, to have access to study space and go on different um, Richmond Endeavor events with one another, just as sort of an added way to build community um, inside the program. So that's sort of a, an overview. If you have any questions about the program, again, feel free to throw them in the, uh, in the chat and I will get to them as we wrap up today. Um, but we have a few more slides to go over. Um, I, I've mentioned that there's a few different um, sort of academic programs and courses that you can take as an Endeavor student. Um, so we have eight of them um, that we are offering this year. Uh, and kind of slide by slide, what you'll see on this first one, um, all of these fulfill an FYS course, which is a general education course that every student um, has to take during their first year on campus. So everyone um, takes an FYS course of some sort. So these ones on, um, on my first slide here all fulfill your FYS requirement. Um, so we have civic journalism and social justice, um, monumental change, which um, is sort of a deep dive into the history of the city of Richmond and how it um, relates to some sort of social and political movements that have taken place um, across the country over recent years. Um, salsa meets jazz, which is a cultural study of salsa and jazz um, music and how it connects to different areas around the world. And then story connections, which is um, sort of an intro to writing and storytelling and how it helps you form bonds with people in different communities. So for all four of these um, courses, you will get your FYS credit fulfilled. Um, as an Endeavor student. Um, the second piece, which you can see IDST, those are all half unit courses. Um, so it's a little bit less um, time in class compared to a typical um, one unit course, which is three and a half hours um, per week. So IDST um, courses for these four are a, a bit about half that time. So about two hours per week um, and they're all project fo focused. So you get to work on different projects and do different presentations at the end of the semester that are related um, to your Endeavor course, sort of a capstone. The next two communities that I wanna focus on are um, where cooperation meets conflict, coalitions and leadership across human societies. That is a course in the leadership um, college 
So you'll see LDST 101 and 102 are your fall and spring courses. Those both fulfill um, base level requirements for the leadership major. Um, so if that's something that you're interested in, I would highly recommend applying to this specific program. And then we have Sustainable River City um, Space and Place in the Climate Crisis. So Sustainable River City is unique because you'll see GEOG 210 and GS 210 in the fall. It's the same course, but you can use it for credit as a geography major or a global studies major. So if you're interested in either of those two fields, um, this could be a perfect perfect way to um, kind of cross some of those general eds off your, off your um, list. And then SUST 101 at the end is a piece of the sustainability major. So if you're interested in, or excuse me, minor. So if you're interested in minoring in sustainability, um, you'll get a course um, towards that minor as well. So it's a really interdisciplinary sort of science and environmental studies course, um, again, focused on sustainability within the city. So some very cool stuff happening there. And then the last um, two courses that I want to talk through are um, societal impact through business and science, math, and research training, also known as SMART. Um, so these are slightly bigger than our other Endeavor courses. So it's double the size. Um, it's about 40 students each year that enroll in both of these. And you'll see that instead of one course per semester, um, business offers three courses each semester and SMART offers two. Um, so if you are, for instance, interested in being a business major, um, enrolling in the Business Endeavor program allows you to cross off three of the general ed courses for business every semester. Um, so it's in line for anyone who's interested in any sort of discipline within business, and it's crafted to make sure that you are staying on track um, as a business major while still getting all those sort of extra pieces, including um, uh, faculty advising, the Navigator, the uh, Roadmap program, and all those things. SMART, similarly, is geared towards students who are interested in STEM or pre-med. Um, so you'll see that you get um, to, in your first year, still check off um, biology, math, uh, 211, and math 212, as well as chemistry. So um, all of those courses that uh, most STEM majors are going to take are, are built into the curriculum that way. So that's just, again, a very brief overview of our eight courses that are open for students to apply to in Endeavor this year. Um, I highly recommend if you're interested in one or several of the courses that you hop over to our website, um, you can find it by simply Googling University of Richmond Endeavor. It should be the first thing that pops up. Um, I'll also have um, some links at the end of this presentation. But um, on the Endeavor website, you can do a deeper dive into um, everything about the courses that you're interested in. So you'll get a much deeper sort of description of the projects that you'll be doing in class um, than I've given you to you today. You can also find staff bio, um, biographies um, and faculty biographies about the people who are teaching these courses and kind of what they've done leading up to this point. So it's a good way to see if not just a course is good a good fit for you, but also the faculty member who you'll be working really closely with for the year uh, will be. Um, so just covering some nuts and bolts before I open it up for questions. Um, the Endeavor application is currently live. So um, it opened uh, about a month and a half ago. Um, so some of you may be listening and have already applied, and that's fantastic. Um, we've um, seen a good number of um, applications come in over the last month. Um, but if you're just hearing this now and you're thinking this is a great opportunity, I don't want to miss out. Um, the big kind of due date deadline that you want to make sure to apply before is June 1st. So June 1st is when we start our review process. Um, so the day before that, uh, make sure that you are submitting everything, that your application is all together um, and ready to go. Um, your application is available to, it's available to all incoming first year students. There's no additional requirements or anything like that that you need to um, fulfill other than the application. Um, and it's available online in your spider portal. So it should be um, a bubble that's sort of in your portal um, when you log in. Um, if you do apply, um, it takes us about a week to make decisions um, for admission into the program um, and to place students within their courses. Um, you should hear back from us um, around June 10th, if not earlier. So we do have a pretty quick deadline. Um, if you apply, make sure that you're keeping an eye on your email. Um, around that week of June 10th, just to make sure that you don't miss um, some good news from us. 
uh, via email. And all of our emails are sent to your University of Richmond email. So if that's not something that you've activated yet or not something that you're checking um, currently, it's, trust me, a good habit to get into now because all university information is going to that um, richmond.edu email. And then just some other quick uh, little nuts and bolts. Um, housing, as I mentioned before, um, uh, housing is required um, for all Endeavor students in Laura Robbins Court, which is one of our first year residence halls. Um, so all Endeavor students live together in the same space. However, you don't need to um, live with someone in your same class. So you can room with any Endeavor student um, who's admitted into any of the eight classes. Um, and once you have received an offer to get into Endeavor and you accept it, from there, you'll be able to kind of re-log into your housing portal and select a Endeavor housing assignment. Um, if you don't do that by the deadline um, that we'll communicate for acceptance, um, we will go in and sort of uh, automatically assign you to um, another Endeavor student if you've accepted your spot, um, but don't designate, designate a roommate. So um, if you don't know anyone yet who you want to designate, you don't have to worry, you'll still be given an Endeavor roommate uh, who's in the program. And I think this is my last slide coming up. Um, like I said before, livinglearning.richmond.edu is um, our official website for Endeavor and some of our other programs. Um, like I said before, you can always just Google um, University of Richmond Endeavor um, and everything we have will be the first thing to pop up. Um, if you wanted to reach out to me or anyone else um, on my team at the University of Richmond, you can always send, e send an email to newspiders at richmond.edu. Um, and we'll get back to you um, in a couple of business days um, with an in-depth answer to your questions. That's sort of the um, catch-all email for um, incoming first years uh, this summer. And without any further delay, I will start to answer questions in the chat. I only see one so far, uh, but feel free to type away. Um, from Deborah, how can a student maximize their Endeavor experience? That's a great question. Um, there are a few ways that a student can really maximize all of the things that we kind of cram into this first year. Um, the first thing that I would recommend is utilizing your Endeavor Navigator, um, who is that peer sort of mentor and advisor, who's a paid staff member at the university um, on a part-time basis when they're not being a student themselves, um, who's just there to offer you time to connect, time to meet one-on-one -on -one where they can answer your questions about academic requirements or just kind of life as a student. Um, so I would say um, that's a huge piece um, that students maybe forget about as they get stressed and move um, into sort of the hustle and bustle of midterms and finals and all the things during the academic year. Um, that Endeavor Navigator, you'll certainly build a relationship with them during your first few weeks during orientation and beforehand, um, but they're there with you the entire time throughout the year. So just making sure that you um, sort of lean into them um, as a guide to your um, student experience is one huge piece. Um, the other piece is, again, uh, building a, a relationship with your Endeavor faculty member. Um, they sign on for a year commitment to serve not just as your instructor in the classroom, but also your advisor and someone who's willing to meet with you and sort of give you um, advice and check in um, throughout that entire academic year. Um, a lot of the time, those Endeavor um, faculty members are looking to Endeavor students for research opportunities. So if that's something you're interested in, um, in the field that your Endeavor class is related to, um, that is a great way to sort of open up the door to research as well. Um, as well as, you know, if you enter Endeavor and have a good experience, you can always come back and serve as a navigator for um, other incoming Endeavor students in the past. So there's sort of a pipeline um, for folks who in, in, enroll in Endeavor and have a good experience to give back to the community as well. So it's something that you can keep um, kind of leading into and, and giving back to throughout your entire time at the University of Richmond. Um, let's see, Adam, um, what is the selection process for the specific communities and how difficult would it be to switch? Great question. Um, so you can apply, I'll start there, um, to up to five of the communities at once. The application allows you to select up to five that you're interested in um, and you um, provide them in rank order. So you, the first one that you designate um, in theory should be the one that you want to get into the most and so on and so forth. Um, so we take into account um, sort of all different aspects of your application. So um, things like your incoming GPA, um, which communities you rank um, and, and 
what kind of ties into your interest statements that you provide. There are three different short answer interest statements on the application. Um, so we're really looking for a sense of sort of intellectual curiosity um, and and what help help us um, information helping us um, decide what community would be the best fit for you based off of um, what you tell us. So um, I would highly recommend be really thoughtful with how you answer um, the short answer questions on your application because they're a big um, sort of factor and if you get a placement into a specific community and what that placement will be. Um, the second piece is um, how difficult is it to switch Endeavor programs? Great question. Um, it's not actually something you, that you can switch. So if you are admitted, for example, into the Business Endeavor program and you accept that offer, um, you are um, that that's the only offer that you'll receive. So while you can always, if you choose to drop the Endeavor program throughout your first year, if it's not a good fit for you, um, you would not have the option to switch into another course. So again, reasons to be thoughtful and really give some, um, some honest reflection um, before you uh, fill in your application, because um, it can change a lot. Um, it can, it can set you up for success in a specific major. Um, let's see. If a student is applied to a single dorm room, does it impact their likelihood of getting one since we will be limited to one dorm location with Endeavor? Oh, applied for a single, I see. Um, so if you are interested in Endeavor, uh, I can tell you now you're probably not going to have a single um, dorm room um, unless you have sort of a, a specific need or circumstance that would um, cause you to need a, a, a single, but um, 90 percent, more than 90 percent of Endeavor students are going to live in a double. So please take that into consideration um, just when thinking about if the program is going to be a fit for you. Um, you can always fill in the housing portal before your acceptance, though. So if um, if you know that you, you'd like a single dorm room, you can fill that in whenever it becomes available and still apply to Endeavor. Um, and then once you're accepted and if you accept an offer for Endeavor, you can then go back and sort of refill it out. Um, from that point, though, you'd be opting out of a single if you had one though. So there might be a choice for you to make there, um, but that's for you to make. And I can't really tell you what's um, what's more important. Um, let's see, has anyone been accepted to Endeavor yet um, if you have their application already? Great question. Um, no, we make all um, our Endeavor acceptance decisions after that due date of the first. So it's not a rolling admission. Um, we we take a look at the the entire pool of people who apply um, who applied on we'll we'll take a look on January or excuse me June second um, and and make sure that everyone has a fair shot at getting in. So um, no, we have not made any admissions decisions yet, and we won't for a couple more weeks. And then the last question I'm seeing from Samuel: How many students enroll in the program each year? Great question. Um, the past two years, we've had just over 200 students apply. Um, so it grows every year. Um, it, the program has become more and more popular um, since it started about five years ago. So we're expecting more than 200 or so this year. Um, and we have, uh, like I said, eight classes to fill, um, each of them around 16 to 20 students, um, except for those two smart and business that each enroll 40. So. I'll let you do the math on how many spots that is, um, but applications can get competitive. So again, uh, make sure you're putting some thought and um, and really honest uh, reflection into your response um, if you go in and, and fill in that application. Okay, I think questions have slowed down. If you have any other questions that I can talk through um, on the line tonight, uh, make sure to get them um, submitted. Um, I will hang out for another minute or so. How many students enroll into the program? Um, like I said, it's 16 spots for each of the six smaller courses, 40 spots for business, and 40 spots for SMART. And we typically fill all those courses to capacity.
Okay, when do students need to arrive? How long do parents stay? Great question. Um, so the um, move-in day for Endeavor is going to be three days before orientation. Um, I am blanking on exactly what that date is, but um, you should have received um, information about orientation by uh, already at this point. If not, you will soon. Um, so it will be on um, the Sunday night um, before orientation that all students and families will be able to move in. Um, parents are able to stay. Um, so we do have uh, on Monday um, of the, the first day of Endeavor Roadmap, um, a specific orientation student just for parents. So you do get to hang out and, and stay for a little while longer if you want to. Um, and we have some, again, orientation sessions um, just for those um, transition program parents um, where you can um, stay, get lunch with your student, and also learn a little bit more about the University of Richmond before you um, leave. How do the Endeavor Navigators differ from the peer advisors for all new students? So Endeavor Navigators are specific to the program. Um, each class has one Endeavor Navigator who is um, sort of dedicated just to those 16 um, students or so. Um, peer advisors uh, are actually run by um, the same departments that run Endeavor. Um, so your Endeavor Navigator will serve as your peer advisor um, over the summer. So um, they're actually the same role. Um, it's just that Endeavor Navigators are sort of your peer advisor plus additional responsibilities going on throughout the entire year, um, but they fulfill the same function. Um, so all students coming in have a peer advisor. Endeavor students, your peer advisor happens to be your navigator. Um, okay, Adam. Uh, for the question concerning the three words that describes your experience after graduation, do you need to provide explanations for why you choose those words? Um, you don't necessarily need to. I think um, that there's no sort of word or character limit on um, how much you explain um, any of the answers. Uh, I don't think it could hurt to provide a little bit of a why. Um, why you chose to describe those three words on the application, but it's not going to um, sort of not let you submit if, if you don't um, provide an explanation. Um, but again, like I said, uh, it's always better to um, reflect and, and give us a little bit more to work with so that we can get to know you. Okay, my question queue is empty once more. Um, I will wait for one more minute. Oh, Karen, there we are. Um, if you choose the business track, are you are you locked into applying to the business school if you change your mind later? Same for leadership. No, um, not at all. Um, you are locked into, let's say, if you choose the business program, um, you, you are going to be locked into those three business courses that you're going to take in the fall. But if maybe in the fall, midway through fall semester, you decide um, business isn't for me, I'm not really enjoying these courses. Um, no, you don't by any means have to dec declare a business major um, or enroll in any courses beyond the fall if, if you choose not to. So it's still exploratory and made in nature. Um, there's no sort of year long or multi year commitments associated. Um, uh, with like your major um, for Endeavor. And, and even if you do take one of those few that is um, tied specifically to a major, you can always change your mind um, whenever feels best for you. Um, Alyssa says, so it's around 20% of students that participate in Endeavor. Um, that sounds like a pretty good statistic. Um, we, we typically say around a third, um, but we do have a couple less courses this year than we did um, last year. So 20% um, sounds sounds pretty accurate. All right, everyone. We're, well, it looks like we are out of questions. Um, this session is going to be recorded, um, so you can access it in the same place that you can access all of the summer series recordings. 
Um, and again, if you have any questions that you think of after listening to this recording, or maybe that you didn't get a chance to ask tonight, um, feel free to send an email over to newspiders at richmond.edu, um, or take a look at our webpage about the Endeavor program. There's a lot more information than I've covered there tonight, um, and you might be able to answer your own question and then some. So um, we, we look forward to reading all of your applications. Um, I highly recommend that you apply to this program. Um, it can change so much of your first year experience at Richmond um, in a positive way and really enhance it. Um, and there's really no reason not to. There's no application um, fee or anything like that. So um, we look forward to hearing from you. We look forward to meeting you all um, this fall, um, a little bit before that even in the summer. Um, and have a good night, everyone. Thanks for joining us.